Well, I've just been talking to Arthur Penn about the fact that you guys have worked together on some pretty interesting pictures. Uh, yeah. Tell me about your own feelings about your association with this man. Well, when I first uh, was offered the role in Bonnie and Clyde, I was uh, thrilled to be working with a major director like Arthur because I had, I had heard of Arthur for years, uh, being around New York as a young actor and, and um, you know, working some uh, in live television that Arthur was, but we never had a chance to work together. And of course, I was. Uh, it was a great break for me, also Bonnie and Clyde, because I hadn't done any anything quite that that large. Had you ever visited that area of the country before? Uh, Dallas. The, you mean the Dallas? Well, and when you were shooting on location around Missouri and Kansas. Uh, no, actually, the whole film was shot in Texas. None of that was on location. Uh, yeah, none Sherlock? of that was uh, in uh, Missouri or Kansas. We uh, we just kind of faked some <coughs> of those roads and stuff. And uh, almost all of it was shot in Dallas with some studio work uh, at the mm -hmm. end. So I, I wasn't aware at all of, of that area. What about that accent? That Missouri accent is the best Missouri accent I've ever heard in a movie, yeah. I think. Oh. Well, we all kind of <laughs> tried to work on, on accents and trying to be as authentic as possible. And, and the great thing about being on a location, uh, of course, is that you have the people right there, that the, you know, the locals that are talking to you. So a lot of that kind of came through osmosis in, in a way. When you die in that picture, suddenly that, that movie has been going towards something that's very unfunny and very serious and very uh, yeah. threatening to the viewer. I mean, do you look back upon that moment as a turning well, point in your that was a that was an interesting uh, sequence for me for a number of reasons. One, uh, I had asked Arthur early on uh, when I knew that, uh, when we talked about doing the film, if I could when I came out of the, the motel right. in the middle of the night, if I could have a, like an old underwear shirt on, which is kind of bare-sleeved and all that, it looked as if he had been sleeping in that. And he said, yeah, that's a great idea. Well, we shot the early part of the arrival uh, at the, what they call the Ring of Fire. We shot that in uh, the very er first part of the film, I think in, uh, around the 1st of October. And when we shot the night sequence of that, the following evening was like eight weeks later. So it was, there was snow on the ground, and matter of fact, in one of the close-ups, you can see uh, snowflakes coming down in front of one of the actors' faces, uh, Michael Pollard. So it's one of those kind of decisions that you make, uh, artistic decisions that you make that you really get kind of stuck with because it was bitter cold. But beyond that, the, the, the change in that film to go from kind of a comedic uh, idea to uh, one of dead seriousness is, I think, one, what made that film uh, the kind of classic film it is. I think a whole generation of moviegoers suddenly kind of got turned on to a different kind of filmmaking in that picture. That's right. It's a it's a real theatrical choice. Yeah. Uh, it's one that uh, was very brave on both Warren and, and Arthur's part to make. Then, of course, came a marvelous film that I think has never gotten it to do, Night Moves. Yes. Love that film. Now we have Target. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm curious if you'd fantasize with us for a second. Have you ever wished you had a kid or had a father who would prove to be such a different kind of person than you had thought him, which is the main premise in the movie? Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's an in interesting premise. Uh, you know, in reality, I think that we know our parents uh, so well that it would be very hard to believe that, that they, one could change that much. But that's the great fun of filmmaking, of course, is, <clears throat> is to suspend that, that disbelief and and to be able to say, uh, yeah, this uh, this could happen. This this you know, someone could live this double life. Yeah, and suddenly this nice guy is getting a little bit of a Popeye Doyle edge <laughs> in some of those scenes. You must have kind of savored that, huh? Oh, I did. I you know, as actors, uh, loved uh, any kind of change, any kind of sense of difference with a with a character. If he if he can uh, suddenly surprise an audience or something with um, a different. Uh, element of his character that, that that's always exciting for an actor. You've been surprising audiences in your own way, I think, in most of your pictures. I'll never forget Otis Berg <laughs> in Superman. Um, is there any kind of role you really would be reluctant to take on, or is it just everything is grist for you? No, I, I would like to think that I could play pretty much everything. We were talking about Shakespeare the other day with, with, um, with, with an actor and, and, and I was discussing, uh, I would like to do Shakespeare except that I, there is something about Shakespeare that seems so, so, so very English. I'd like to see you do Pistol. And it, it, I don't know that, that um, American actors can ever really do Shakespeare unless you're, you have a kind of a, a cultured voice, and, uh, but it would be a challenge. 
the man from Missouri, I want to call you after that Missouri accent. Uh, meanwhile, while you were in Hamburg, I guess that was quite a bit of second unit work was going on there. Six days, I understand, yes, setting uh, that up. Yeah, it was um, the interesting thing about filmmaking, of course, is that that it's it's all done one shot at a time. And, and as an audience, you see a sequence that goes on for seven minutes, you think, how in the world did they do that? But of course, uh, as you say, it, it took us six days to, to shoot that. So it was, it's done with a lot of glue. You just you piece those pieces together, and it makes it into a kind of a a whole that, as an audience, we love to see. We love to, to get involved in that kind of action. Yeah, and your decision to jump into the water there, is that a little bit of macho stuff there, or was there something yeah, else? I think in it's a little <laughs> macho, a little ego, a little uh, actor wanting to be involved in the, in the project, uh, that kind of thing. Finally, could I thank you for one last thing here? In, a, in an age of missing in actions and Rambos and all of that, your role in Uncommon Valor gave us some moments of very real pain and anguish that I think was important for audiences. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious if you have maybe a comment about this rash of Vietnam films. Well, I, the, the, the comment has to be that, that none of us uh, are, were that aware of how much hidden frustration and uh, anxiety that the, all, all of America has, has felt over the, over the Vietnam War and especially over the, the uh, soldiers and, and Marines who were missing in action, yeah. that there's a lot of anguish there. And uh, as evidenced by the success of Rambo and, and the Chuck Norris uh, film and, uh, and Uncommon Valor. Gene Ackman, a lot of dedication and some surprises along the way as well. From New York City, talking about Target for KCTV5, I'm John Tibbetts.